back with another video today. This one is a personal one and one that I didn't really anticipate making, but I'm normally not one to make New Year's resolutions and that's not what this list is. watching people talk about their own goals. It's one of my weird passions. It's just, I, I love hearing people get excited about life and getting excited about the things they want to accomplish and achieve within a particular time period. Let's talk about my first goal, which is reading. I am a big reader. I really love books. I've always loved books, but I've never been the type of person to push myself, I guess not since I was a kid. I've never really pushed myself to read a certain number of books in the year. I always keep track of the books that I read. I have a really nerdy Excel sheet um, with the book, the author, the month that I read it, and like a general reaction. And I read 19 books in 2019. I would really like to double it. I want to read 40 books, which sounds like kind of a lot, but it's, I, I had a few reading dry spells in 2019, so I wasn't really taking advantage of my year and my reading time, so I thought it would be, I think I can do it. I think I can do 40. I know a lot of you guys out there are also big readers and many of you have been pushing me to get a Goodreads account and I finally caved and I did and I have one. I think, I don't know how to find people. I don't know how it works. I still don't know how Twitter works, but it is nice to see what other people are reading and to connect with other readers who have similar tastes in me. I read a lot of just like literary books and and adult fiction. I don't really read YA even though I'm a big Harry Potter fan. A sort of nebulous, vague sort of goal for this reading 40 books in a year. I would like a big chunk of them to be classics because I have classics on my shelf that I've never cracked or that I've never finished. When you're a big reader, there are certain books that you feel like, I need to read War and Peace. I own War and Peace, but I've never read it, so that's like one of those books I'd like to read. I'm currently reading um, House of Mirth by Edith Wharton. You would know that if you follow me on Goodreads. Another one of my goals is to get back to daily yoga, barring any sort of sickness or emergency. I really want to have that no excuses practice again. For about three and a half years, I was very dedicated to my practice. It was truly every day. And then I just got off track. The biggest thing that got me off track was running because running just doesn't, I don't know. It's like a love-hate relationship between running and yoga. I also would like to sign up for a Spanish class and find an affordable class that can help me really learn the language because I've been sort of learning, I know a little bit here and there, um, but I've just been teaching myself and I really learn best in a classroom when it comes to learning a language. So I'd like to sign up for a community college class or a language program. Another big sort of professional goal for me, if you know my sort of professional trajectory or what, I'm, what I've been working on for the last, six years is um, I want to write books, I write fiction, and I want to get published, and I really need to take that next step and attend a professional writing event, which I'm putting this on a goal, on my goal list, even though I'm already sort of accomplishing it because I've already been accepted into a writer's retreat and I'm super jazzed about it. It's in March and it's in NorCal and it's gonna be beautiful and I have high, high hopes and expectations and all the wonderful things and I'm really, really excited. Another writing related goal is to establish a really solid, no excuses writing routine. I don't know exactly what it's gonna look like quite yet. I tend to sort of write when I can fit it in to my schedule because I have such a loose schedule because I work from home. And I don't think it's working for me. I think I need more structure. I need more of a solid expectation for myself every day. So what I think I'm going to establish is a morning routine of you know two hours of writing every day. But it's something I really wanna keep up and not just for the sake of I have a writing routine but actually to um, work and grow as a writer and to um, finish the draft that I've been working on. Next on my list of goals is working on the house. The big sort of project that I have taken upon myself is renovating the backyard and the front yard. The biggest reason I wanted a home home with you know not sharing walls is because I really wanted a backyard and I wanted a place to grow fruit trees and to grow vegetables. I planted my winter garden, which I showed you in my last video, and it's been awesome. I'll, I'll show you guys how it's progressing. It's just so cool to pick lettuce and mustard greens and kale and cilantro from my garden and eat them. It's 
it's I don't know why I'm, I find it very sexy what I really am looking forward to I'm so excited about is planting fruit trees because fruit trees are like the gift that keeps on giving especially when they become a more established mature tree you barely have to do anything to them you like prune them once a year it depends on the tree and they give you so much fruit and I just find the whole process of growing fruit that I mean fruit is sexy on its own but just it's so inspiring to for me to grow your own fruit and grow your own food. My dad has been sort of nursing a mulberry tree for us the past year or so and getting it ready for when we could put it in the ground. I think I'm gonna be able to do that in the coming weeks and we just have to have a sort of a plan for the backyard and I wanna plant an orange tree and a persimmon tree. I would love a fig tree. Eric just doesn't want our yard to turn into a farm so I need to be aware of that. I'd also like to continue planting vegetables with every season, every three months. I want to clean up the garden box and plant new things, possibly even making another garden box. And then as for the front yard, we're, we wanna do it on our own to save money, but it's so much work. And then for the indoor renovations, we have a lot going on. It's just, I mean, we've been here since May and we haven't painted anything. We haven't really done a lot because we have had leaks and you know back door that we have to deal with and the rain caused some problems and it's just so really slow going it's never as fast as you think it's gonna be you think you're being realistic but no so we need to repair the walls in the kitchen because they're kind of cracking and then paint them we need to repair the back bedroom because we are, don't really have a bedroom right now and we need to paint the walls we need to lay down new flooring because this flooring is in really bad condition. I want to paint the outside of the house too, a totally different color. And then finally we can put up the bookcase because we are planning to put up a big bookcase right here. It's just been really sad. All my books are literally suffocating in the garage right now in boxes and sometimes I hear their voices at night calling out to me and it breaks my heart to be honest. This past year, um, if you've been paying attention to sort of the mental health stuff I've been sharing with you, I've learned a lot about self-acceptance and not um, try not being such a perfectionist about things because I did not realize I was an incredible I was a debilitating perfectionist but with that I don't think you know loving who you are the whole already concept that has been really powerful for me I don't think that means complacency and that means that you can't strive to be a better version of who you are. So I do think it's important to have goals and to push yourself and to not get complacent and just sit on your butt. And um, I, yeah, the end. Those are my goals for 2020. I have some more like personal goals, but I am keeping them to myself.